cast aside the illusion that there is a beginning and an end to the story. The story has no beginning, and it has no end. All there is is a performance of people connecting, living, influencing each other, and departing. Hello, patrons, and welcome back to Night Parade, the show where we watch anime and talk about it for your entertainment. I'm Fat Man. I'm Fenya. And tonight, we're reviewing Bacchano. I love Bacchano. I had never really heard of this until you brought it up. I've loved watching Durarara in the past, and I had no idea this was connected. Ugh, it, this, this show was just so damn nostalgic for me, much like Durarara. Oh my god. Which we're going to have to get to someday. Yeah, I might mention it here. <laughs> I'll mention it sometime. I might even make a post on the old forum. Yeah. Ugh. When this episode draw? The dollars. Mm-hmm. God, I used to browse that all the time. So Ugh. Bacchano, for those uninitiated, is, uh, well, immortal gangsters on a train. Yes. You heard me right. Immortal gangsters on a train. What the hell kind of premise is that? Well, the best kind. I'll let you know, I was never bored watching this. I was never bored thinking about this anime. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the source material for a hot minute. Okay. Bakano was originally a light novel by Ryogo Naritara. It is currently 22 volumes. Oh, wow. And it's still ongoing, and it's in hiatus. Oh, man. And ha has been since 2017. Huh. Because the author injured himself and has been in and out of the hospital and working on a manga. Not the Bakano manga, I'm assuming? No. Ah. Uh. It was also published within the publishing group Dengeki Bunko. And if you know anything about Dengenki Bunko, you know that it's mentioned incessantly in Durarara. Oh. By Eric and Walker. That's how you, uh, that's how you advertise. Yeah. <laughs> I read this the latest volume of Dengeki Bunko. <laughs> I mean, I do like. If, if it was available in the U.S. in some semblance, I'd have what I'm trying to say is I'd essentially have gotten issues of Dengeki Bunko. Ah. Because I'm a huge fan of reading. I used to read a lot, but I can't stay focused to do so anymore. I, I still read a lot, but that's because I'm weird. Eh, reading's not weird. No, I'm weird for other reasons. That is. That is a fact. My reading habits, though, are pretty disturbing. Okay, then. Like, reading a hundred chapters of a manga in one day, or reading 300 pages in an afternoon. <clears throat> Mangas are fine, but books without pictures I have a hard time concentrating on. Maybe I'm just dumb. You're not dumb, you just haven't found a book that's right for you. I can still go back and read the Odd Thomas series. The thing is with reading is it's not really comprehension or that that makes you better at it. It's reading something you enjoy. That's what makes you better at it. Oh, uh, yeah. It will grow your skill. Anyway. Like, yeah, moving on from my tangent about how reading is very important <clears throat> and how if someone isn't learning how to read well, find a different kind of material for them. So, like I said, this world is connected to Durarara. This mm -hmm. takes place in the 1930s? 30s! 30s, and 20s. 1800s. Yeah. So, I guess 200 years prior to the beginning of this, a bunch of alchemists aboard the ship, the Advina Avis, uh, summoned a demon, and he gave them immortality. Well, he, he taught them how to make immortality themselves. Immortality juice. Immortality booze. <laughs> Using the, uh, the grand panacea. Yep. 
immortality booze. Hell yeah. Prohibition and immortality, immortality boo- booze. <laughs> so, Wait. some of them wanted to keep the recipe for the Great Panacea secret. So, corrupted humans would not... Use gain it, immort- abuse it. Yeah. And, uh, well... One of them didn't like that and started killing all the other immortals. Now, that doesn't make sense if you <laughs> know what immortality means, but I guess by drinking this Grand Panacea, you gain the ability to absorb other immortals into you by placing your hand upon their head. You give them the suck by thinking, man, I, w- I-, I want to devour you. And you gain all their knowledge. You put your hand on their head and think, I want to eat. And, and you eat. They just get sucked into your hand. It's super weird. You get all their knowledge. And, and disturbing. That they're like fucking dry out and, ah, uh, not cool. And then they get sucked into your hand. It's so disturbing. The only way it was less disturbing was because I kept saying, suck. <laughs> Right? Reminds me of fucking Moroku from Inuyasha. Yeah, I was thinking it. I didn't want to say it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'd have said it very poorly. Wind tunnel! <laughs> I, I'd have said it, it'd be like getting a BJ from Moroku's hand. <laughs> no! <laughs> Absolutely horrifying imagery. Oh boy. Leave that in the episode though. Okay. <laughs> it's like getting a BJ from Moroku's hand. So, uh, immortal old guy that was killing the other ones falls off the ship, lives because he's an immortal, mm-hmm. and they all go their separate ways. Where does this take place? New York? New York. And the uh, board the transcontinental train known as the Flying Pussyfoot. Yeah, so... I'm struggling really hard not to laugh at that, because I am immature. So one of the, uh, one of the local gangs in New York is run by immortals. That's where some of uh, them Martin? have settled. They're not... Isn't it the Gandor family? No. I don't think it's Runa... the Gandors. No, it was the Runarada. No, Martillos. That's what Furo's from. Whatevs. Oh, yeah, Runarado. Ah, I probably should have written these down. I I remember their names. But so, not their affiliations. Yeah, I remember the names and the affiliations of most of the characters. The Gandor family, I believe, is the one with that uh, Hercule dude. The Hercule-sounding guy. That is absolutely the Gandors. That is Berga Gandor. Yeah. Gustavo Bagetta. Mm-hmm. This is amazing. I I noticed this immediately when I heard his voice. This character, Gustavo Bagetta, is voiced by Chris Rager, who, as you may know, also voices Hercule from Dragon Ball Z and Mr. Torg from Borderlands. Explosions? I have one question for you. Explosions? Absolutely. Oh my god. Yeah, then I I couldn't not hear Hercule from him for the rest of the show. I I couldn't get Mr. Torg out of my head while watching the anime. <laughs> In a good way. Oh my goodness. In the best way. I mean that as a compliment. So... That's that's Spoilers. the premise. Yeah, that's the premise. That's light novel stuff. Before we get into spoiler territory, right, good sir? Yeah. Spoilers. Sure. Yeah, they're gonna be there. Though, if you're mm-hmm. watching this, you've probably already either seen this or weren't interested enough to watch it yet. So. Because this show is ancient by like, today's standards, I think. Feel. When did this come out? Anime? It was... 2007. Not quite ancient. Yeah, 12 years or so ago. It's not too old, compared to some anime I enjoy. 
Yeah. I think you know the ones. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Hit me with that 2004 anime. <gasps> uh, back to what I was saying earlier. This takes place in the same world as Dura Ra Ra, but it also shares similar storytelling elements, which I find quite fascinating. Because like in Dura Ra Ra, it tells of the same events across multiple episodes, but from different characters' perspectives. And that is, narratively, that is so interesting to watch. Yeah, it's really interesting. And you're really not seeing the same shit. No. Because it's also from different angles, too. Oh, yeah. Different POVs. Like, like in one episode, it's... Like, the best example of this in Bakano is on the train, where we followed Jacuzzi and his gang for a while. Yeah. And then, like, two episodes later, we see it from... We see the same events from Isaac and Miria's perspective. Oh, Isaac and Miria. God, I love Isaac and Miria. <laughs> They're too pure. They're too pure for this world. Also, for some reason, I, I want... And somehow able to do a Miria voice. Oh, yes? Yeah. Hey, Isaac! We forgot a present for Ennis! Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> the only way to steal was to steal from the Mafia. I don't that... understand that leap in logic. <laughs> I love Isaac and Miria. They're gold they... medalists in mental gymnastics. They're right? so... I don't understand them. Like, they're so... They're such great people. And they're also idiots, but also not. They they succeed in whatever they do. I, 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 except mining for gold, of course. They're... I, I wouldn't say they're idiots. They're just... Uh, yeah, they're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... No, they're idiots, sadly. <laughs> oh... I, I, if there was a series revolving just around Isaac and Miria, I'd probably watch that forever. Same. I, I, okay, so, speaking of Isaac and Miria and the ra ra, ra I, I want to mention how great the character, like, even the episode titles add small tastes of characterization. Yeah. Like, the one that just... Like, there tends to be an episode for each group of characters' perspective, at least once, you know? Yes. Like, for for example, there's Isaac and Miria's, which is named Isaac and Miria Unintentionally Spread Happiness Around Them. That's one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, it's a great episode. <laughs> or... Or Jacuzzi's episode being Jacuzzi Squawk Cries, Gets Scared, and Musters Reckless Valor. Or another one of my favorites, Lad Russo Enjoys Talking a Lot and Slaughtering a Lot. There's so or much damn personality to these episode titles. Or, 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 uh, less, no less noticed one, but pretty great. The vice president didn't, doesn't say anything about it. The possibility of him being the main character. <laughs> the first episode. All of them are that great. This show just oozes personality. Yeah. It's just... I love how, like, it's everywhere but focus. Yes. And what's great about Bakano is all of the characters get plenty of screen time. Right? Yeah, like, and, and for all of the characters in this, they... They bounced it out pretty well. Yeah. I know all of the characters now. It, it, most it, it, of them. Most of them. And it did help that the the opening introduced most of the characters by name every single episode. It's They do that in Durarara, which I love. Yeah. I think this OP is a bit better than some of the Durarara ones, because it, it has a bit more personality. This OP, by the way is called Guns N' Roses by Paradise Lunch. Which it's... is a great band, by the way. Check them out. I love their jazz songs. It's fun. Like... It's jazzy. It's 
finger snapping good. It's lovely. I love it. Yep. As a character-driven story, I think it'd be appropriate to talk more about the characters now. Yeah. We've already gone over Isaac and Miria, the goofball duo. They're so in love with each other, and they play off of each other so perfectly. Uh, Isaac and Miria are what's frequently known as goals. Yeah. I mean, despite my love of Jacuzzi and Nice. Yeah. Isaac and Miri are just so goddamn in love with each other. It's It's beautiful. (laughs) Just thought I'd wink you goes, my guy. (laughs) (laughs) Isaac and Miri are indirara. Oh yeah, they did show up in that. I I was wondering who they were the first time I watched through that, because they are focused on for a few seconds and they're never referenced again. But that is real cool. I know, right? (laughs) Also, they dress like samurais. (laughs) Okay, back to the episode, right? Yeah. So, Isaac, Miria, we've got Firo, and no, not the Pokemon. Sadly. This is who I thought the main character was, based on the, uh, based on the poster. You You thought Firo was the main character? Yes. We, we saw surprisingly little Firo. I mean, surprisingly w- little for Indurara amount. Yeah. Which is not a lot, but it's not a little. I'm, am I making sense? Yeah, I get you. Everyone gets a fairly equal amount of screen time, except for the people aboard the flying pussyfoot get a little bit a, a lot of bit more screen time. Yeah, I I want to see so much more of Firo. Because the anime is largely focused on the first two novels, which is based on the events that take place aboard the transcontinental train known as the Flying Pussyfoot. Yeah. So, let's talk about the premise of that. On this train, there are... Three opposing factions that just happen to be riding at the same time. Absolutely. In the best way possible. We've got... And then several third-party onlookers. But we've got Jacuzzi's group. What were they? uh, They're brewers? Uh, they're smugglers. Ah. Because I know they make alcohol and I know they make bombs. They make booze, they sell booze, and they blow shit up. Jacuzzi is... I had a feeling when I first saw him that he was secretly a badass. He's he's always crying. He is crying most of the scenes he's in. He's... <laughs> but that, that, that couldn't be all there was to this character. There has to be something else. I bet he's a badass. And... It when the time came for him to show his stuff, he was fantastic. Um, Jacuzzi's plot is my husband, though. I'm just <laughs> gonna say this right now. Yeah. Yes. Ah, uh, he's so precious. I know. I just want to protect his stupid, dumb face tattoo. That face. that's another thing that. Got me. T- that got me fucking tearing up. Oh, really? When oh. <clears throat> in the OVAs we watched, we saw that the girl he grew up with, uh, niece, the she- demolitions expert of his goo. Yeah, she was experimenting with explosives when she was a kid, and got like one of her bombs blew up in her face, gave her tons of burns all over, took out one of her eyes. The oh my god. I can still hear the screaming. Oh that, yeah, no, that scream was... That that was horrible. That scream was horrifying. I had to stop and cool off for, for a few minutes after that. Oh my yeah. god. It, as someone who fucking love Like, I love 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 Niece as a character. Mostly because, honest to god, I, I think she's really hot. Yeah. Yeah. 
like girl crush number one. Yeah, she's awesome. But yeah, I just I love everything about her. She blew off her eye, she's covered in scars, and Chikuzi to make her feel better. Like I, I don't know if he scarred his face or tattooed his face. He got a face tattoo. He, he got a okay. He got a face tattoo in the shape of a sword to emulate the uh, the scars that she has on her, so they'd be alike and that she'd feel comfortable around him. And she wouldn't get it stared at. And that's just. <laughs> oh my god. Also, speaking of character that. Uh, of how great these it two are. warms my heart. In the ED, well, in the OP, <laughs> yes. when it comes to them, <clears throat> and they're running off from the explosion, they're holding hands. Yeah. You see the two of them, and it cuts away after focusing on them holding hands. Ah. Uh. I love them. <laughs> I love them. Oh, they're great. We've also got Lad's group, Lad Russo. Uh, what family was he part of? Uh, the Russo family. Oh, right. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> think, Batman, think. Please oh, man. That in. Of course. Please occasionally sound like a dumbass. <laughs> We've got the mad lad himself, Lad Russo, and he just, uh, well, his personality is murder. Murder. He, he likes killing people. He really, really, really likes killing like people. Killing people. His, he, he, his greatest huh? joy in the world is seeing the face of someone that's so sure that they won't die today, and then ending them. Yeah. And it's horrifying, and I love it. I would not survive an encounter with him. No one would. Well, Lad we've seen a few. Is the se Lad is the second deadliest character in the series. And who might be the first? Claire Stanfield? Yes, Claire. Even though they have relatively similar on-screen body counts. Yeah, Claire Stanfield, or... Vino, or the Rail Chaser, as he's come to be known by, is one of the conductors upon the Flying Pussyfoot. That <laughs> makes you giggle every time. Yes, it does. <laughs> and he, uh, kills a bunch of gangsters. Kills a lot of people. He kills a vast majority of the Flying Pussyfoot single-handedly. Leaves a bunch of the normal passengers, kills a bunch of the white suits, kills a bunch of the black suits. He's an assassin. <clears throat> oh yeah, he is, isn't he? Yeah. He's a professional assassin, railroad conductor, circus, ex -circ circus performer. He was covered head to toe in blood for the majority of his on-screen time. He's he spent most of his time on screen absolutely covered head to toe in blood. Apparently he's known for like painting crime scenes with the blood of his victims. Hence the name Vino, which is Italian for wine. Oh, that's uh that's rather fitting. Yeah. I have to ask, however, how many STDs do you think he has covered in <laughs> that much blood all the time? Uh, not just STDs, but bloodborne diseases. Yeah. Many. Many bloodborne diseases. Man probably has AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, the man probably has AIDS. Oh. Just... Vino is. I don't know. He, he's one of my favorite characters from the first 13, but I, I love. So many of these characters that I can't pick a favorite. You just can't. Russo can't is so amusingly crazy. Lad is so fucking demented, it's awesome. Uh, Isaac and Miria are just a joy to have on screen. Jacuzzi is so pathetic for, 
for most of the time he's on screen, but I just want to root for him. And he's anything but a coward. Yes. Despite the fact that he almost continually cries. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, he is so terrified and scared of everything that goes on, but he still... <laughs> acts with so much conviction. The best way to describe him is, like, you take a tiny dog, and you make it a person? He's like, he's got tiny dog energy. Yeah! <laughs> How yeah, they run away see that. from <laughs> everything, but go to fucking town if something gets in their space? Yeah, but he's the type of guy, <laughs> to, like, his gang got a uh, hit, and uh, he went out for revenge, and it was him just fucking gunning down a saloon with tears streaming down his face <laughs> <laughs> while holding a Tommy gun. Well, they killed eight of his guys. He, he was so pissed to. off he had to do something. And it's just so freaking cute. <laughs> God, I don't even yeah. know where we are. We were discussing characters. Gotcha. We didn't talk about ne we didn't talk we didn't talk about Ennis or Firo. Right. Really. We mentioned Firo. We didn't talk about Firo. Firo is what was he, the newest member of the Martillo family? Oh, uh, he's the youngest member of the Martillo family. Ah. Yeah, he's buddies with uh Isaac and Miria. With uh Miza. Miza is Honestly, one of my favorites. Miza is the... Man who discovered immortality. Yes, he's the one that summoned the demon initially. Created the wonderful, wonderful beverage known as immortality juice. Yes. And then you've also got Cheslaw, my mayor. He's I... a piece of shit, and I... I love it. I knew he was immortal. I knew he was immortal right off the bat. I got some oh. serious Salem, uh, I got some so, serious Sa Salem Bradley vibes from him. Or Salim. He, he comes off as, like, that kid from The Omen, but yeah. actually smart. The Omen. I don't think I've seen that. It's a horror movie. It sounds like a horror movie. About a kid who's the Antichrist. Oh, fun. It's actually pretty <clears throat> not that great. <laughs> we got Ennis. Ennis, yeah, he's a homunculus of a, this dude named Zillard. Who is the old jackass that killed all the other immortals? Not all of them, but a lot of them. That that's that's really shitty. That, that yeah. That, that's really gotta suck. Having just become immortal, and like there were kids on that boat that became immortals that were killed immediately after becoming. The, the more you think about it, Zillard's really fucked up. Yeah. Oh, man. How does that How does that work anyways? Is just their knowledge passed on, or are their personalities and minds absorbed as well? We I think didn't... it's just the knowledge. Oh, man. I, just I... the knowledge. That sucks. I do really like that system, though. It's interesting. It's very interesting. I'm shocked it doesn't show up in Dura -ra -ra. Because death is the end of knowledge. When you die, all of the knowledge that you possess is just gone. Unless, unless you pass, you pass it, it on it. to someone else. And with this immortality system, when an immortal wants to die, you can put your hand on their head and absorb them gain their knowledge. That is the perfect way to pass on knowledge. I love that. It, it, but it's, it's really sad, too. Ay, but... Yeah. I, I hate... What do you hate about it? No, I, I hate a reality in which death means losing knowledge. Mm. I mean, it doesn't necessarily spell the end of knowledge, but I digress. That's how, that's just how I feel. <clears throat> yeah, and I just disagree. Okay. Moving Let's on. See. Characters. Finally. Uh. Oh, wait, Ennis. Ennis, yes, the 
immortal homunculus. <clears throat> of Zillard. That was saved by Firo. You mean consumed by Firo? No. Well, Ennis was saved by Firo. That's what I said. Yeah. Oh, Ennis, I thought you were talking about Zillard. That... After she has as a change of heart after meeting Isaac and Miria and Firo. Yeah. Also, Firo inadvertently creates a huge batch of immortals. Yeah. <laughs> well, by serving the elixir as accidental booze at a party. Yeah. God, I love the Aurora. Bacchano? I meant, yeah, Bacchano. So much <laughs> accidental immortality. <clears throat> yeah. Isaac and Miria drink it because they thought it was alcohol. Mo most people, other than those aboard the train, drank it because they thought it was booze. Yeah, so now, you got a whole family of immortal gangsters. All because they wanted to quench their thirst. That won't go horribly wrong. Never does. <laughs> We've also got a, an immortal albino mouse running around. And it's beautiful. <laughs> it got hit by a car. <laughs> That was so back. gruesome to watch. But it was also, they were talking about something pretty profound there. Yeah. Right? Indeed. The animation in this is so cool. Like, especially when an immortal is reassembling themselves. Because it's just, imagine like playing their kill in reverse minus the other person. All the blood pools back into them and they're... Cuts heal, the bruises heal, their detached body parts fuse back to their body. Blood flows back into them. It'd be really interesting to see one of them blow up. Oh, yeah. Imagine if Nice was immortal. <laughs> uh, I wonder if, <clears throat> if someone as scarred as her were to drink the Elixir of Immortality. Do you think... Her scars would heal, do you think her eye would come back, or would it just prevent any further damage? Uh, I hope it's the first. Yeah, she looks so cool, though. I, I can't mm. help thinking about this stuff. <laughs> mm. My mind goes a hundred miles an hour thinking of theories when I watch stuff like this. Uh, I love the show, though. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, fucking thing. There's one character I need to talk about. Oh, Graham Spector! Graham Spector. Graham fucking Spector. The man, the myth, the legend of the OVAs. Appears there's only in the OVAs. There's also Chani Lafayette. Yeah, but this dude attacks with a giant monkey wrench. And like our mad lad Russo is obsessed with one thing and one thing only. And that is disassembling and breaking things. Just like Lad is obsessed with murder. Yeah. <clears throat> and their fight was a thing to behold. Wait, he and Lad fought? Oh, yes. Sure. Well, it's been a while since I... It showed their first interaction. They fought, and Lad was impressed with him, and didn't kill him and took him on as his second-in-command. Which is shockingly kind, considering Lad. Yeah, because he's got a soft spot for people that rush towards their deaths. Yeah, which is weird, but <sighs> sensible. I loved uh, the confrontation between Vino and Lad as well, because they have two just completely opposing ideals, and that makes for some real cool drama. Oh, yeah. Lad believes that... Oh, shoot, what was it? What are what are Lad's ideals? Lad's ideals are kill or be killed, essentially. He has the right to kill anyone he wants. And, uh, well, Vino, he doesn't believe that he can die. He believes that he is the god of this world, and if he dies, everything will cease to be, so he can't die. Ah... <sighs> He's an interesting fellow, that one. Yeah, Vlad is an interesting fellow, as in, you know. Yeah. Everyone's interesting. There isn't a bland character in this. 
Yeah, even the fucking vice president of the Daily Days newspaper is cool. You know which character I love? Whom's? Sugar Cube. Who? Sugar Cube. Literally who? He's he's just this guy that he's got connections with the uh with the news company with the information brokers. And I I think he was running around with the uh Genoard? Yeah. And he just he just carries around a box of sugar cubes and eats them. Oh god, that sounds so goddamn funny. He just he does everything with a straight face. Like, hey, do you want one? No, uh, we, we, we don't want any. Okay. He just, just munching on sugar cubes. And they call him Sugar Cube because he eats sugar cubes. He... <laughs> he he, he kind of looks like a friend I had in middle school. Oh my god. <sighs> and the only, the only character in the show that accepted a cube from him was the, uh, the, the boss of the news place. Behind this <laughs> pile of books and papers you can't even see him <laughs> and he, he just walked around the, the piles and the clutter and the two sitting in the room were just like sweating staring at him doing so because it, it is it against the rule to look at the boss or something because no i think it's just a running gig ah because none of the characters ever see him we never see him even and it's hilarious <laughs> uh, I don't know why I love Sugar Cube. I mean, everyone has different characters they love. There's also Genoard Dallas. We haven't talked about that. Uh, point Dallas Genoard? Yeah, J Dallas Genoard. He's a piece of shit. Yes, he is. Sister's looking for him the entire time, and he's just off being a scumbag. He's off sleeping with the fishes. So, this, literally, that was something that I was so confused about in the OP, because when it gets to his name title, it shows him like underwater, air escaping his lungs, and like why? Why does it show him in the water? Do I even know this character? And then it shows him that he got uh, near the end. He got immortality. And because he pissed off the wrong people, he got cemented in an iron barrel and thrown to the bottom of the river to drown for all of eternity. Well, at least until he died of old age, because there are immortals that live forever and can't be injured, mm. and there are immortals that just can't be injured but die of old age. Yeah. So he got the... Uh, the immortal juice to not take damage, but die of old age. And he's just sitting at the bottom of the river, drowning forever until he dies. Forever and ever. That is... Fucked up. That's horrible. I... Oh my god. They pull him out at the end of the OVA, but... How for however long he was in there, that had to uh, that that had messed me up. Really? Yeah. Oh You'd have God. never been the same near water ever again. <laughs> oh my God! And the loneliness. I oh yeah. Don't want to think about it. Best not to think about that type of shit. Yeah. Anyway, crazy story. I am going to watch this. So many more times. You're gonna read the books? I might. This is I have to... this is entertaining, and I really want to see where the story goes. Dang it, Fenris! You giving me so much stuff to read. I don't have time for this. <laughs> you ha wait. What do you mean? I'm giving you so much to read. So just all the stuff we've been watching recently. Wandering Sun. This. Blue Exorcist, but I kind of put that on myself. Yeah. I see. Ah, uh, this was a good watch. I. Was a good watch. I thank you for recommending this. I recommended it because trying to recall were we? Oh yeah, because Wandering Sun was far too peaceful, and I wanted. I was out for blood. Yeah. <laughs> 
was occasionally I thirst for blood. Eh, it happens to everyone. Totally. Yeah. So, I'd be really happy if they made more of this. I want a season two, or some more OVAs. Give me a movie or something. Like, to watch? Yeah. Yeah, I love short shit, dude. We should do more movies and OVAs. Yeah. But, next week, because I've been meaning to see it, and it just looks badass, and I don't want to traumatize you with Angel's Egg. <laughs> Someday. Someday I'll show you. I'll traumatize you with something like love exposure or something. Oh, that. Oh, boy. Hey, I love love exposure. It's it... unironically my favorite movie. It seems interesting, but. It's so long. One day. I love this. Uh. I'd tell you where you can watch it yourself, but you really can't. It's not streaming anywhere. Buy uh, the Blu-rays. It might be streaming at Funimation or Hulu. I didn't see it at either of those. Ew. So if you want to watch this yourself, uh, buy it. Or don't. It's up to you. Please buy it, though. Yeah. We've shared our thoughts, but we'd like to hear yours as well in the comments below and on our Discord. The Night Parade has now come to an end. Next week, Redline. The fact is, I'm never gonna be killed. So remember this. Mercy and compassion are virtues that only the strong are privileged to possess. And I'm strong.